the field. Every neighborhood has one. Grass, concrete, or dirt. The stage is the same. The rules, unwavering. And the goals, beautiful. It goes in! Improbable scenes! It's where the dream begins to achieve the ultimate victory. The underdogs have prevailed once again! One cup, open to all. There is a celebration in Orlando. Now, America's oldest soccer tournament is back. Field doesn't care if you're a pro or trying to be one. It only asks, how bad do you want it? It's unbelievable! The Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. The magic of the Open Cup makes its way to Northern California for a Bay Area battle between the Oakland Roots of USL Championship and El Fanolito, the NPSL amateur side from the Bay Area from Cal State University East Bay at Pioneer Stadium. Alongside Manchester United legend Gary Bailey, I'm Joe Malfa. Happy to have you with us this evening as these teams get set to clash. It's a home away from home for Oakland here at Pioneer Stadium. They opened it up with a victory this past weekend. Hope to have another tonight in U.S. Open Cup. And here's a look at the format here in round number two. 24 USL teams entering this round, over 29 matches. All of them can be found on Bleach Report YouTube and USsoccer.com. And the round three draw will be conducted this Thursday, April 6th at 6.30 Eastern. Both of these teams hope to have their name in the pot. Only one will prevail. And it's going to be perhaps another dramatic evening for El Panolito <laughs> after what we saw in their opener a 3-0 victory, but not a conventional 3-0 victory. No, it wasn't. They were struggling. It was 0-0 at the end of normal time. They were down to 10 men, and then they, they scored twice from a corner. They'd never scored from a corner in the previous season. They got two. Uh, firstly, Jonathan Mosquera, then Sa Quinones, and then Cesar Benitez just finished it off. So in the end, it looks like an easy win, but that was all. That all happened in extra time. Anything but. On the other side, Brian Tamakas will make his U.S. Open Cup debut with the Oakland Roots. 63 caps for El Salvador, including going 90 minutes last Monday against the United States in CONCACAF Nations League. There's a lot of experience there at a very, very high level when you're playing international football. So you have to believe he could be a top-class signing for Oakland Roots, and it's a tough Western division they're in in the league, so they'll need him for that. But today, though, his first focus, get through this round of the Open Cup. El Farolito, as we take a look at the starting 11s, they make three changes from the team we saw in the last round. Oakland, 11 changes from the lineup they just put out there on Saturday in USL Championship. Look, you would think it's risky making 11 changes. Basically, all your fringe players, those who've been injured, those who've come in late, all getting a chance. But amongst that, there's a lot of talent. You've already mentioned to Marcus Neville Hagshaw back from international duty. Kevin Wright's a classy player, Joseph Nane, we know all of those. There's a couple of youngsters thrown in, and for El Farolito, three players coming in, Jonathan Perez, Werner Santos, and Camilo Monroy. El Farolito hoping for some more magic tonight. These teams have never met. El Farolito, they do boast the US Open Cup title. They were playing under a different name back then, but they won it in 1993, back when the tournament was still all amateur. Oakland looking for some history tonight. It would be their first ever win in U.S. Open Cup. Last year got to play in the tournament for the first time. They drew the short end of the stick, had to fly all the way out to Greenville to take on a USL League One team Greenville triumph and lost that game. So looking for their first victory here tonight in Open Cup. Farolito from left to right in the yellow and blue. Oakland right to left in the all black. The man in green is Chris Calderon in charge of this one tonight. And the fans are ready to usher this match in here at Cal State East Bay. And away we go. Within that starting 11, Gary, for Oakland, as you mentioned, some players not your typical replacements when you change 11 players in chatting with head coach Noah Delgado, he firmly believes that five or six of these guys on a given day could be part of their best 11 if they had, say, a USL Championship playoff game tomorrow. Absolutely. That's why there's enough talent there you would think to win, especially on home soil or in your home territory. You know, it's not, they're not regulars at the stadium, but still it's, it's up the road from where you train and where you live, so it feels like home. There's a couple of youngsters as well. There's, there's two of them. Drew Murray's 17 and also Ethan Kohler. So... 
little bit of a lack of experience. You've got this mixture of, of real quality and then some youngsters and weak points in your team, which, of course, if you're El Farolito, you want to focus on those weak points and see if you can get something out of it. Especially with one of those youngsters, Drew Murray, being the center back, the linchpin of a three-back set here for Oakland. That's him on the ball there, just knocking it across, and no doubt they'll try and high pressure. Difficult thing for, for a team like El Farolito, they're not full-time professionals, they've all got jobs. You know, if they run around too much in the first half an hour, <laughs> they'll be gassed. So, you know, they've got, to, they've got to pace their game and make sure that they can last the 90 minutes or 120 minutes if necessary. That's one thing we asked Noah Delgado, the Oakland head coach, about when you come into a game like this, how do you make sure you don't take things lightly? He was candid. He said, look, at the end of the day, we expect to be fitter than them. We just had a preseason. We're practicing day in, day out. We expect to have more camaraderie and cohesion because, again, we're practicing day in, day out, whereas they practice just a couple of nights a week because as you mentioned Gary they all have day jobs and this is not their full-time gig but we cannot sleep on the quality that this El Fanolito team possesses you look through their starting 11 almost all their guys have played some level of professional soccer in South America you take a look at their anchor at center back Jonathan Mosquera played a decade in Colombia Nicaragua Venezuela over 150 pro appearances so these are not Guys, you picked up on the side mm. of the road. They Most of them have played professionally. They've just transitioned into post-pro soccer playing days. Yeah, 100%. And we actually asked him when we chatted to him. We asked the coach, Santiago Lopez, what do they do? He says, well, one's an Uber, uh, Uber Eats driver. Another one's <laughs> a painter. There's a couple of contractors. He said, we only train Tuesday and Thursday nights, and we have fun. We don't take our training too seriously because these guys are tired after a day's work. Uh, and you asked him the question, he said, what if you did win, what would you do? And he said, I'm going to go to sleep. I've been so tired trying to work and put this game together. It's not your typical celebration, champagne pop, and going out to a club or something. Everybody out there today for El Farolito has to wake up and go to work tomorrow. Now, you would think some of them maybe if they have some sick time, maybe preemptively took a day off tomorrow just in anticipation of a potential celebration, but maybe you only have a limited number of those. I think also, you, even if you if you don't win, your body's going to be so tired playing against Oakland Roots. You're going to run more than you've ever run. You're going to tackle harder. Uh, so you need a day off, I think. Over the top here, first test of that Oakland back line, and Tamaka sweeps across, takes it away from Judas Higuera, and Higuera commits the foul. Mm, could be a little bit physical, this game. I think it's one of the, the things you would say if you're El Farolito, get at them. See if they're up for this. If they think it's going to be easy, if they just expect to win, we'll, we'll give them a bit of a surprise. Yet, when they played against international San Francisco, El Farolito in the previous round, they didn't get stuck in too much. Yeah, they, they, they tackled, but they win an overly physical side. And the coach says, we've got a lot of talent. We use our talent. We knock the ball around. That's how we like to play. Murray along to Tamakas. Murray actually just returned to Oakland a week ago today. He was all over the world on international duty with the U.S. men's U19 squad. Anybody who might be tuning in familiar with the USL Championship, some of the names you hear, Kobe Henry, who got transferred from Orange County, Joshua Winder, the star for Louisville City FC, who might be on his way to Europe as well. He was teammates with those two fellas with the U19 team in camp. The last couple of times they've called into camp, January, March. He is on that radar and considered to be among that caliber. Those players I previously mentioned, Winder and Henry about to age out of the U19s, and Murray is sitting there, I mean, just recently turned 17, so he's the guy who they expect to next take that torch. And I think at USL level, you're looking for, for some really special talent to come through that just tips things in your favor. Ronaldo Damas did that for Orange County a couple of seasons back. And if you can just find someone, Charleston Battery. Fidel Barajas. Fidel Barajas, what a play he is. What a goal he scored a couple of weeks ago. You get someone like that who just grows quickly. Just for that one year you've got him in your team, you, you, you can have a match winner. You can have an you know, Open Cup winner, someone who gets you to a final like Sacramento Republic did last Yeah. Shaw took a boot to the face from Cesar Benitez. And the first yellow card of the match as well. Benitez, as you mentioned before, Gary, scored the exclamation point goal in that 3-0 victory late on in extra time. I just want to see, uh, it's Ooh. quite high, isn't it? It's not like the Oakland Roots players ducked his head down low. He hasn't. He stood almost full length and taken that one. Got him with the toe of the boot wow. as well. Clean in the face there. 
That was Neville Hexhaw. Shake hands after. He was immediately apologetic. Benitez threw up his right hand and knew the yellow card was coming, <laughs> it appeared. No way around it. A long way to go now on a yellow card. He's going to have to be extremely careful. As we always say, if you get an early yellow, it just means that you can't get stuck in for the rest of the, of the match. You can't afford to miss time a tackle, leave an elbow flailing, do anything like that, because they played with the last 10 minutes of normal time and the full extra time they played with 10 men after their, their captain got sent off. And, and he was a wonderful, or is a wonderful player, Herbert Soto. 27 year old Colombian and when he went off you thought oh they're in trouble now but <laughs> they go on and win it 3-0 something to keep in mind as we go through this one Oakland just played here on Saturday it's a temporary home as they try to get back to their normal home Laney College free kick coming here for El Farolito and that ties exactly into what I was going to say right side of your screen you see the different color of the patch mm. right there in front of the goalkeepers was just recently resurfaced and we saw a bounce in the game this past Saturday for Oakland against New Mexico, where the bounce wasn't true, ended up catching the goalkeeper off guard, hit the post, and fortunately for Oakland, yeah. stayed out. So both ends of the field had that resurfacing. So any shot that bounces or skips in front of the keeper could be a bit of an adventure. I think I'm sure both managers will, will have said to their strikers, do exactly that, just bend the ball, get it down. By the way, that was a youngster, the Ethan Kohler, the 17-year-old who gave away the foul. Looked a little bit harsh because he, he won the ball, but he's a big unit, he's, he's well over six foot. And uh, to play in midfield with that height, that's, that's a bit special. And they have a special moment here. Oh, Farolito from the free kick. Save made by Taylor Bailey. Soaring through the air. Just barely kept it out. Good goalkeeping from Taylor Bailey. He needs to impress. He wants to be the man to take over from Blanchett. He moved across that goal really well. You would expect him to get across. It's got height on it. Well hit, it dips. In fact, you know what? Afterwards, he nearly hits the post. He has to dive into the side of the netting there just to avoid smashing into the post. It actually was a bit more difficult than it first looked. Well struck free kick. I believe that was Ricardo Araujo on the free kick. Taylor Bailey hasn't seen a ton of time for Oakland, the 26-year-old from Tennessee. Only 12 total pro appearances, but He's one of two players on the roster in his fourth year with the club. One of the holdovers from their Nisa days. The other being Johnny Rodriguez starting at the opposite end of the field as their number nine tonight. But in that time, since they've joined USL, just 12 total appearances for Bailey. Started their Open Cup game last year. Actually, the third Open Cup game he's starting tonight. He was with lower division side San Francisco City FC, the USL League Two team back in 2018. Picked up in the midfield by Araujo. He's taken down cleanly as Chris Calderon. Mm, little moment there, wasn't there, going into the box? I mean, I don't think it was a penalty, but there's no far here, so one of those referees got to make a call, made the right call, but at least it's a threat going forward from El Farolito. That'll give them confidence. Here's the Brazilian Uric. Uri, 25 year old from Brazil. 30 appearances in the lower divisions of Brazil from 2019 to 2021 with six goals. And that's really the makeup of this roster for Alfonso. It's players who decided for one reason or another that their time pursuing it professionally was done, moved to the United States, and still want to stay around the game as Oakland has a free kick on the way. And you pick up talented pieces like that. And we've seen them in the past at this tournament win a game or two, you get in front of the right people, and it's a showcase for them as well to, to go ahead and get contracts. It is. I think they've made the decision, though, to, to focus on being painters, contractors, <laughs> they've got little businesses going. They see, they see a long-term future in that. They don't see a long-term future in soccer, especially those already in their late 20s, early 30s. It's a few of them. Jo Jonathan Perez, 33. Jonathan Mosquera, 35. Uh, Luis Becerra, 31. So all players have decided that their future income lies elsewhere, <laughs> not in soccer. <laughs> well, for one night at least, the dream is alive. Now they have to contest with a free kick. Ryan Hur takes it, but the referee wasn't ready, blown dead. Ryan Hur had not yet blown the whistle to restart play. 
was a header into his own net by one of the El Fraulita players, who I assume had heard the whistle. I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Herr again, near post. This one's headed in by an Oakland player, and it'll count. It's Johnny Rodriguez. Three goals in three games now for Rodriguez in all competitions for the Roots. That is some form. And the other two matches, he came on as a late sub and scored in both of the previous two games. But it's a lovely ball in from, from her, and he gets at that near post. Not marked properly. You can see Luis Becerra, the captain, tries to do the marking job, but maybe it's just the pace got him. Maybe the organization wasn't there. Either way, they've been punished. And you get the sense that from here they could build on this Oakland Roots if they take the opportunity and kill this game off in the first half. That's what the aim would be. You don't want to risk it. You want to bury the opposition as quickly as you can. And you'll like this, being a goalkeeper yourself and being a goalkeeper that shares a last name with Taylor Bailey, of course. But you got to give a shout out to what he did at the other end of the field. If he doesn't stop that free kick, it's a different story. It's 1-0 the other way. 100%, and, uh, and that's what you expect from the keeper. Nothing that the El Farolito keeper could do there. Elisa, Johan Lizaralde, called Lisa at the near post. If they get beat there, very difficult for a keeper to respond. Araujo. Rolled along for Werner Santos. One of the new additions to the starting 11 for El Farolito tonight as compared to their first round matchup. He changes in all one necessitated by the red card to their captain. At the end line, trying to respond here. Tamakas is there. Gary, you and I were chatting off the air before we came on for this broadcast. The blueprint for a team like El Farolito in a game like this, it's either score a stunning goal early so you can defend a lead or keep it nil-nil as long as you can and hold on for dear life. The one thing you cannot do is concede early. Unfortunately for them, that's what happened here so far. Yeah, it puts them in a very difficult position because they're, they're, they're susceptible to the counter, which is exactly what's happening now. Look at the space they've got to operate in, Oakland Roots. Here's Rodriguez with one goal already. It's Trayvon Reed who played that switch across the field. They have high hopes for him as well. The 23-year-old already has a cap for the Jamaican senior national team. Going ahead by El Farolito into the box now. Cut back toward the penalty spot. But Drew Murray is there. Over the top again. And wide by Uri. They're not the biggest team, El Farolito, in the previous match. Throughout the game, we thought at the time they were going to struggle to score from crosses. Well, they scored from two <laughs> set pieces in the end, but they're just not, not the biggest guys until they can throw their big center backs forward for a set piece. Your point had it scored in all of 2022 and NPSL from a set piece. Started off their 2023 NPSL season with a 2 0 win this past weekend. No foul again here. A couple of times now, El Farolito player has gone down just outside the box. And look at all this space now for Trayvon Reed. As Johnny Rodriguez for support uses it. Jojo Nane back to Rodriguez. Johnny Rodriguez cutting it back. Never got the shot off. He had a, had a split second when the ball first came to him. Johnny Rodriguez to hit it and he didn't take that chance. But here they come again. Ryan Herr, who served the free kick that Rodriguez put away. Rodriguez again. Once again, he loses it. Wave to play on. Good clean challenge by Mosquera. Here is Wright. Kevin Wright racing through, and seemed like he was caught between two minds there, whether to give it up to Rodriguez or take it himself. One right back in the midfield by Ethan Kohler. 17-year-old continues to carry it out to Ryan Herr. Cutting, shooting! What a start for the Oakland Roots. Already up 2-0, a quarter of an hour in. That's a great finish there from the young man. Brilliant, he sets up the first goal with the free kick and then cuts in here on his left foot and buries the ball in the back of the net. They've got space to play in. And it was in fact Wolfgang Prentiss who sticks it in the back of the net. Great cutout here as well in the middle. 
Absolutely brilliant from Ethan Kohler. And he plays it to Prentice. He comes in and buries it. And he's being tackled at the time that he scores as well. And just beats Lisa in goals. And you do get the sense then that that is game set and match. Be very difficult to come back from this. Wolfgang Prentice, 22 year old, went on loan last year from the roots to Northern Colorado Hailstorm in USL League One. 12 appearances, had a goal and two assists. They liked what they saw. They felt they had a good bench option in him this year. That's the other side of the Open Cup for any team like this who's playing against a lower division qualifier. You know, Final League you get a chance to get some minutes for those players like Apprentice and Ryan Herr, all these guys who may have not yet seen time in USL Championship and maybe it gives Noah Delgado something to think about or a reason to trust them for 10, 15 minutes off the bench instead of being afterthoughts. Absolutely, and they're, they're both young. Princess 22, Ryan Hurt 23. So they've got a great future as well. If you're a coach, you're looking long-term thinking if they keep developing, they become regulars, then they could become regulars for five, six, seven years. Of course, if they're that good, they might move on to <laughs> right. higher things, but none, and if they do, you've got money to spend in the market. So either way, it's, it's good news for the coach. Here's Tavakas. Rodriguez on the run. Played all the way back to Lisa. And a handball against El Farolito. It's difficult for El Farolito now because they, they're leaving massive amounts of space in the middle of the park because they have to go forward. And they haven't got the energy to get up and down the way a professional team would. Trayvon Reed right at Lisa. This is what they want. You know, these teams want to play against better teams, fitter teams. They want to be pushed. They want to be tested. Well, they certainly have been tested in this opening 17 or 18 minutes. And if you look, you've got four players up front here for El Farolito. Then a huge gap in midfield when there's slowly the players are joining them. But it's a lot to ask. We made the point early on. These are part-time players. They're working all day. You can't expect the same level of energy as you get from full-time professionals such as Open Roots. Looking around Open Cup today, 10 matches in all. We've yet to see any true cup set. A couple came close. Jacksonville Armada U23 had a tight 1-1 game against Miami for quite a while. Miami ended up pulling away for a 3-1 win. Hartford Athletic beat Lansdowne Yonkers 3-0. Memphis 901 of USL Championship were pushed to extra time against one Knoxville of USL League One, but they beat them two to one. City Union of Nisa, a three to one win over Manhattan of USL League Two. Detroit City FC of USL Championship, a one nil win over Gold Star of Nisa. Tampa Bay Rowdies of USL Championship, a two nil win over Nona of USL League Two, and then Charleston Battery of four to one win over Savannah Clover. So all the higher division sides have won so far today. One hangs in the balance, San Antonio FC of USL Championship. The reigning USL winners are one to one against Club de Leon of Nisa, third division side in the 89th minute. Elsewhere, New Mexico United, a four nil lead currently over UDA Soccer. And then of course, two nil here. There's other two games going on at the moment as it's knocked through to Bailey, but the offside flag was up. You can catch those on the U.S. Soccer YouTube, the Leach Report YouTube channels. I think what it does show, though, is that the USL is getting better and better. They're getting deeper with talent. They're doing what sort of top teams are able to do, which is bring out the second string 11, and they're nearly as good as the first team. And we haven't seen that in years gone by. The USL has, has often had teams where their, their first 11 is good, but then they struggle with depth. Right now, the USL this season is the best I've ever seen it. There's so much talent, and here's absolute proof. You make 11 changes, and they tune all up within 15 minutes against what is a, a decent semi-pro side. And on top of that, as Reed is able to play it along for Kohler, slip through to Ryan Herr. On top of that, you figure that if an MLS team come the next round or the round after that, thinks the opposite and throws out a B team against the USL team's first side, 
that's why we're seeing some of the upsets that we didn't see in past years because that gap has closed significantly and it's what got Sacramento Republic all the way to the championship game last year against Orlando City, which the MLS side, of course, won. Give and go between Reed and Rodriguez. Could he have hit that first time instead of trying to cut it back? On that point about that final, I think it was 70 minutes in, it was 0-0. Right. So Sac Republic not only got to the final, they put up a fantastic show. Then they beat three MLS sides on the way to the final. And in the end, it was just one step too far for them. But you're 100% right. The gap between MLS and USL, if the MLS side you know, makes a lot of changes, the gap isn't that small anymore. That goes for USL League One as well. UD and Omaha on the third division, USL League One, they went to the quarterfinal and they lost 6-0 against Sporting Kansas City when they had to go on the road to SKC. But the third division side in USL able to get to the quarterfinal as well. Johnny Rodriguez being summoned back by Chris Calderon. And he keeps walking away, but you know, a clever thing. Okay, stop now. Good. Just take your lecture and move on. Yeah, I've never understood that. <laughs> a player's mindset. I guess you don't necessarily want to give the referee the satisfaction, but you're only going to harm yourself if you yeah. don't just turn around and listen to what he's got to say. It's an easy way to get in the book. <laughs> and then you never know from beyond that if you're going to have to pick up a second yellow. Here's Rodriguez through again, cutting it across. Still loose after Lisa made the initial save. Oakland threatening for a third. Yeah, it's almost getting too easy for Oakland. There's so much space to play in, and they've got the pace. You leave them one on one. Have a look here. Just pushing forward, a lovely ball being played from Trayvon Reed. Johnny Rodriguez, all the time in the world, and some good defending is anything that stops that third goal going in. Nane. He draws a foul. And this. Oakland side have played well through three matches despite the 1-1-1 one, one, and one record. In chatting with Noah Delgado, you brought up the notion of expected goals, and he was quick to point out that they lead all of USL Championship in expected goal differential, and it's between expected goals scored and expected goals conceded. He was quick to point out, however, that that's not the only metric. You're not going to win a game based on expected goals. You win them on actual goals. <laughs> but it's a good indicator over time that you get the sense that results will ultimately go your way. Here's Rodriguez again. The flag stays down to the back post. Prentice doubles his tally, and it's 3-0 Roots. Good finish from Prentice. But a lovely ball in from Johnny Rodriguez. He's playing such a decent match today. I mean, he's in such great form. Third goal in three matches, and he sets them up. There's assists, and you're getting players like Wolfgang Prentice into great positions and scoring goals. It's good for his confidence. But again, the ball being played wide, Trayvon Reed doing really well, sets up Rodriguez. Head up, he sees the run at the back post. So there's not a lucky ball in his head. It was up already. And I tell you what, he's, he's got his start to the season has got to be similar to the man who left Oakland Roots, Otto Colson, when he started last season. He was top of the goal scoring charts. I wonder if, Ronnie, if, if Johnny Rodriguez is going to follow suit. <laughs> three goals in three games isn't too bad. Somebody's got to step up into that void. To put a ribbon on that conversation about expected goals, Gary. I think you're finding that more and more coaches are starting to look at that, not as the end all be all metric, but a telltale sign of where their team is in terms of the overall context of the league. Do you need to improve? Are you okay? Again, over time, they feel if they're good in those categories, luck will even out and the results will come. Yeah, I think that's all you can do as a coach. You, and, and, and what you hear often from coaches all, all around the world is, we go out to play the right way and to do the right things. We can't control the result. You know, we can play really well and lose, we can play really badly and win, but if you play really well and lose, you know that over a period of time, you will get a lot more wins and losses. See Sorry. the banners waving there, trying to cut you off the left side of the screen for the El Panolito supporters who yeah. have made the trek. Good for them, <laughs> they're still waving the flags, why not? They can be proud their team's got to the stage. It's more than a lot of other teams can say, having to go through it. Various rounds of qualifying to get here, some cases. At the start they were hoping for here. 
And chatting with Santiago Lopez, their head coach, the goal was to get through, and the dream, I should say, was to get through and play San Jose Earthquakes, the MLS side, yes. a couple rounds from now. But he was quick to point out, like, look, if we get there, we know we're fortunate. A lot's going to have to go your way. You're going to need to have Lady Luck on your side. You're going to need to have the USL sides maybe play a B team, maybe come in on their worst day. He was realistic about the whole notion, hopeful that it would go in their favor through 25 minutes. It hasn't, but they just seem very happy to be here, and we're looking forward to this opportunity. From the set piece, Taylor Bailey is there. Yeah, and he was saying to us as well, he said, you know what, as long as Rito doesn't play, we've got a chance. <laughs> well, Rito didn't play, and they've still got no chance. <laughs> uh, Rito's a fantastic player, but again, and, and I'm sure I'm sure Santiago Lop, uh, Lopez will agree. The quality of Oakland Root and the depth of these players is just what chance have you got when you're you're semi-pro? Look at the space they've got to play in. Prentice almost kept it alive. Now here's Arias. Coach Santiago Lopez has quite the story himself of how he got here. Played professionally in Mexico in the reserve divisions before he moved back to the United States where he was born in Hudson Bay, California. Started working for the El Parolito company, just picking up trash and delivering produce. There were a lot of ex-professional players working for the organization that didn't really want to pursue soccer anymore, similar to some of the players on the field today. And Santiago Lopez realized that he also didn't want to be involved in soccer anymore, but the owner of the company had an issue with the head coach at the time, said, hey, I know your background. Can you step in, finish out the season? He did, and now he's been the head coach for 13 years and hasn't left. So it's it was meant to be story. for Santiago Lopez. <laughs> Wonderful story. And, and he's been positive. The one thing, okay, the, first, the first time I've seen that many yellow shirts in defense, but they've been playing three up front and saying, hey, we'll, we'll trade blows for you, with you. And of course, unfortunately for them, they've been outpunched in the first few minutes, but uh, they have, they threw a lot of bodies forward. There was a lot of space in the middle. They really wanted to try and, and get at Oakland Roots and, and credit to them and their manager for at least having a go. And they want to use this as a tune-up for their own season as well. A launching pad in NPSL started off with a win, but a you know, bye week this week and then get right into their slate. So this is still, 63 some odd minutes to work on the little things that'll help you when you translate back to your own domestic campaign. I think the flip side of that though is you don't want to get beat five or six because it does your confidence. So at this stage, I mean, they've still got, you know, two or three up. Maybe they're dropping one or two players a little bit deeper just to try and help the defense. But, you know, you can take a 3-0 beating by Oakland Roots because they're above you. But when it starts getting to five or six, Human nature sets exactly, in. Exactly, exactly. So I think they might just try and close it down here, or they might just keep having a go. Look, you can see the yellow shirts are in right. attack. They're not shy. <laughs> and they win it back. Free kick on the way. El Parolito, a local chain restaurant here in the Bay Area. Handful of locations scattered throughout the Bay Area. The original restaurant is where they proudly display at the bar their 1993 U.S. Open Cup trophy. Back then, it was still an all-amateur tournament, and they were the victors now 30 years ago, celebrating that anniversary this year. And there is actually an El Farolito location right across the street from the Oakland Roots facility. And we had a chance to ask Noah Delgado, the Roots head coach, if he's been there. He said, oh yeah, quite often. They make a heck of a burrito. He enjoys going there. So you get some community ties. Look out, Taylor Bailey gave it away. Can they pull one back? He made the stop, cleaned up his own mess. Yeah, well done to the goalkeeper there. It was a mess in the first place, a terrible ball out. And lucky for him, he recovered to make the save. Here's Uri. And that is out for a corner. Now, it could be the point you mentioned about the turf. Let's have a look here, because there's that little patch. Yeah, you look at that little green patch that's been put in there. That really bumped up on him, but comes out and blocks it. And as a very relieved goalkeeper, I think he's probably looking at that turf, going, <laughs> what is going on in front of me? <laughs> they scored off two corners in the last round in extra time, El Farolito. Uric arcs it toward the back post, and Bailey is there. 
rollout a little bit too strong for Prentice. Having the chance to call a number of games with you now over the years, that's one thing you always say, if it's in the six, it should be keeper's ball, so Bailey not hesitant at all to get there. It should be a nice loud shout, and also if you shout loud, you get your, your defenders out your way. You can always see when a goalkeeper hasn't shouted because he's clashing into his own players. That was good from, from Taylor Bailey, dominating the box, and that's what most good goalkeepers will want to do. I think he could handle a few center backs considering what he handles in his spare time. He's an animal advocate, a trained therapy dog handler, and he's also a big cat handler. He's handled over 280 tigers, lions, leopards, cougars, and jaguars. So I think he can handle his center backs on a set piece like that. That's an unusual goalkeeper <laughs> resume. <laughs> They joke around around camp that he's their local Tiger King, if anybody watched the Netflix special, yeah. but minus the criminal activities yes, aside yes. from the show. <laughs> you hasten to add. <laughs> Good on him. Um, it's amazing how, how players and goalkeepers seem to be amongst those who have, there's that bounce, it's on the turf. What chance have you got? He responds so quickly. Steinwasher is an accountant, the Detroit goalkeeper. Right. I got to meet him, and he's you know he's a proper, well-qualified accountant who's a serious guy during the day, and then goes and plays his football. So credit to all those those players who are able to do the two jobs because it must be incredibly stressful. Monroy looking for Urik. Starting to see Alfaralito on the ball a little bit more here in these last five to ten minutes. Jersey's five of them pushing on the high press, which when you're a part-time player, it's a lot of energy to expend and a very positive way to approach the game. And there's some value item for the high press. The ball over the top, it skips away at the end, and now a player down back here for El Farolito. That's Ricardo Arajo. Trying to claim there was a foul. Back to his feet, chatting with the referee. That's what he was claiming right there. A little bit of a boot from Trayvon Reed. Might have caught him on the top of the foot, but not a whole lot. Going back to a point you made earlier about trying to play the right way and eventually things will even out. As Bailey plays it again on that turf patch, do you have to stray away from that when it comes to a field like this and knowing that you have to accommodate things like this, a team that likes to play out of the back as they did before when Bailey didn't really have an error, it was just a ball hopped up. Knowing that's there, do you stray or do you just have to push through it and say, you know what, play your style, play like we normally do regardless of the condition there? It depends on the coach. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're coming into this match as El Farolito and you want to win it, you would think the logic is we're going to defend deep and counter-attack. But that's not the way they play, and, and they're not, they weren't interested in playing that way, and they've still got bodies pushed forward. And credit to them for, for being positive. Now, to your point earlier, had they got a that bounce and a lucky goal or something won the lap, then things might have been different. But right now, they're leaving huge gaps in, in the midfield. And over the period of, the, of this game, they could easily concede five or six. Look at the space that they've got to play in here, open routes. And they can easily push the ball wide. They've got players who can do you damage once they attack you. So it's a very brave way to approach the game from El Farolito. Battling here, Arias with Becerra next to him. And all the way back for Mosquera. Just tend to play here in this first half. Damage already done by Oakland. Johnny Rodriguez in the 11th minute, and then a brace for Wolfgang Prentice, scored in the 16th and 24th minutes. You mentioned earlier, Gary, that Alfonso was happy to not see Eduardo Rito in the starting 11 for Oakland. <laughs> His replacement in the starting 11 has both goals, has two of the goals in Prentice at that right wing back spot. So a different face, different name, but in the end, the same results for them that they're seeing from Rito in league play. So much of this open attack funnels through the right wing back, I guess, whoever is over there, whether it's Prentice or Rito. It's very impressive, but again, Johnny Rodriguez, a huge part of that with an assist and a goal himself. 
he's been very, very sharp, not just in this match, but you cover Oakland all the time. The previous games coming on as a sub. Scoreboard within a minute against New Mexico, the last match of coming on. Yep. And the 82nd minute against RGV in the match prior, rescuing a draw for them. Here's Murray, looks so confident and comfortable on the ball for the 17-year-old, making his Oakland debut at center back. Here's Kohler. Rodriguez bends his run, but not enough, flag comes up. Fans dive deeper into the thrills and drama of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Join the conversation on Twitter and Instagram at Open Cup and on Facebook at Official Open Cup. Long run to get there for Igeta. Almost did. Oakland throw on the way. Almost looks like Oakland has... Sort of called off the dogs a little bit offensively. They don't seem to have that same intent going forward as they did in the first 25 minutes when they got those three goals. Well, they're probably conserving a bit of energy. It's still, you know, one half and 10 minutes to go. So they at 3-0, there's no need to go crazy. And then also, a big focus from Noah Delgado on his defense and keeping things tight. Got a clean sheet in the last match against New Mexico. And uh, he wants to make sure that this also is a clean sheet here. So some work to do yet for the open routes. Here's Uri trying to put a dent in that clean sheet, looking for a lane to shoot. Becerra. Give and go with Perez. Shielded all the way off for a goal kick. Oakland, their bench littered with players who did start this past weekend in league play. So to your point about conserving some energy, you wonder if that's in the back of the mind. Let's take it easy, try to get as many players through a full 90 minutes as we can so we don't have to tap into the bench. And the bench on a night like this is really the starters who they hope to play this coming Saturday in league play. Exactly, they just want to see how, you know, how many players can last a full 90 minutes. Maybe we will see a few subs, but they're going to push most of these players. Looking at the back post here. Oh, Fanolito's not going away in this half. They have persevered and have started to find some opportunities, find some time and space on the ball. Oakland just lethally efficient with their opportunities when they've been there. But both of these teams have five shots. Oakland four on target. El Fanolito two on target. Yeah, they had two little half chances. I mean, one, of course, was a mistake by Taylor Bailey. I say mistake, the ball kicked up wickedly in front of him. And he made a save earlier from a free kick, but certainly the save that he had to make after he mishit the ball, that was a really good chance for El Farolito. Other than that, really haven't had any major chances. Just to finish the point, I'm, I'm sure that Noah Delgado will want most of these players to play close to a full 90, just to see if they've got it in them, so he knows how much he can use them. And as you quite rightly say, try and keep his other players on the bench and let them have a full rest after a, a good victory against New Mexico on the weekend. Might be a case-by-case -case thing. Just as we mentioned at the beginning, there are a few players in this Oakland 11 who on a given day could be selected for what will be considered a full starting 11. And envision Brian Tamakas and Neville Hackshaw as pieces going forward. They wouldn't have brought them in otherwise. Two players with... Big time international experience, Hackshaw for Trinidad and Tobago. Two time all league player in USL Championship. And Tamakas, of course, as we highlighted at the start of the night, 63 caps for El Salvador, went 90 last Monday when they took on the United States in CONCACAF Nations League. So 11 rotated pieces tonight as far as the starting lineup goes. But come Saturday against in the 11 in USL Championship League play, those could be names that are penciled into the 11 as well. Kick here for Oakland. Five minutes to play here in the first half. Hey, 
Trayvon Reed positions it. Body language indicates he might be keen to have a strike, but Chris Calderon came in and moved the ball back a couple of yards, so that might change his mind. I bounce that ball in front of the keeper on that bad turf. Reed into the wall. Kept alive, the flag stayed down. Drew Murray tried to hurry it up. Thinking he was running out of room at the end line. And maybe in the back of his mind thinking the flag might have come up, but it didn't. If he would have settled that, it was mm. three black jerseys in the keeper. 100% in fact. He wished he could have this again because there's no offside there. And when it comes up, Johnny Rodriguez is spare. He's just got to kill that ball nice and easy. And there was one at the near post as well. It was available in Brian Tamakis. So yeah, a little bit more of a, a calm head there. And you can't worry about whether you're offside or not. You've got to get the ball down, score the goal, and then you have a look across and see if you're offside. But at 3-0 up is not the end of the world. If it was 0-0, we'd be talking differently <laughs> about this chance. But at 3-0, it's, it's just you know, coasting. It's not coasting, it's the wrong, wrong word. But just managing, professionally managing the game from an Oakland Roots point of view. You don't want injuries. You don't want to over exercise but you want to put on a good show so it's just a very sensible balance all around. And that word professional that you use is one that Noah Delgado used as well in our chat. He felt the win this past Saturday against New Mexico was a very professional win for Oakland. It was 1-0 in the end but he felt they controlled it for the entirety of the evening from the opening whistle to the closing whistle. One thing that he regrets is they never found the insurance goal. Still of course held on to win 1-0 but New Mexico picked up a red card just beyond the hour mark. And they never had a chance to convert a second time and just put the game away to breathe easily. Outside of that, very happy overall. And if you look at the XG from that game, 1.15 for the Roots versus 0.23 for New Mexico. So they gave the, the visitors hardly anything to work with. And that's why the coach was so impressed. You know what they're saying to us, it's the defense that he feels is so important. Joseph Nane got fouled, but in the aftermath looked like he threw an elbow, and I believe Nane's picking up a yellow card here, and he might be joined by a few others as this gets a bit out of hand. Good to see again what happened there to Araujo. And certainly has spiced things up amongst the players. The referee's got to try and figure this out as to who did what. Again, no, no cameras to go to anything. They've just got to figure it out. And sometimes the ref can miss something, but the ref doesn't see it. He can't give it, and she can't give it. And that's what makes, makes it a bit tougher. Let's have a look here. What happens? Nane does step back with an elbow out. And it looked like initially Nane, or, yeah. Calderon whipped out the yellow card to give to Nane, and then the ensuing scuffle happened. So Nane gets the yellow card he was originally going to get, and I guess after all that, it seems like that's still the only yellow. And yellow for the home side. And uh, yeah, he's getting pushed around a little bit because they feel that he, he put the elbow out on purpose and uh, might have a point. It seemed to step back and raise his elbow at the same time. If there was VAR, this would be a serious red card discussion, but there isn't and the referee can only give what he sees Chris Calderon in that moment and he saw it as a yellow. And you don't necessarily expect that out of Nane. He's looked at as the veteran leader of this team, the captain whenever he's in the lineup. Given away again by Bailey. Can they make it count this time? Alfano Lito taken down. Penalty. They're not going away easily. And they have a chance to bring one back from 12 yards out. That's another error from Taylor Bailey. Doesn't need to get himself in those, those situations. Those delicate little balls on that. Difficult turf, have a look at it again, it's bouncing all over the pace, he, he kills it well, then he plays that dangerous short pass, throws himself there, you've got to stand up and wait, and he threw himself at the body there in the hope of reaching the ball and there, and doesn't reach it, and the moment you don't reach it, and the player goes down, and that's a penalty. And Ajo steps up to take it. That's two bad errors trying to play the ball out the back there from Taylor Bailey, one he recovered from, will he recover from this one with a good save? And the other stroke of halftime. Can El Farolito provide some hope going into the second half? Yes, they bring one back. Three to one. Ricardo Araujo was in the middle of that scuffle a few moments ago. The one who was on the receiving end of that elbow from Joseph Nane. And for now, he has the last laugh. 
And it's a good finish, sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. And it, in fact, he wins the penalty as well. Taylor Bailey just bringing down Ricardo Araujo. Steps up, keeper goes one way, he goes the other, back of the net. And is there a try? Is there a lifeline? 3-1, suddenly you think, well, another goal and they're right back in it. Problem is, there's still those big gaps and big spaces for Oaken Ridge to play in if they decide to have a go. Wolfgang Prentice, they go it by himself here. And again, you just wonder if Oakland cruising, managing, as you put it, up 3 0. If this now flips a switch for them, all right, we gave one up, let's go get two and put this totally out of reach. Yeah, and it goes back to that chance about five, six minutes ago. Was it Drew Murray? Could have mm. just squared the ball. That would have been four. Johnny Rodriguez was waiting for it, miss hits it, comes down the other end, and then an error by the goalkeeper. And now the game comes to life a little bit. It's still obviously very much in Oakland Roots' favor, but. I think as a professional player, suddenly you go, OK, we need to up our game again. We, we, maybe we were coasting a little bit too much. You asked Santiago Lopez about how things transpired in their last match when they went down a man into extra time and then scored three goals. And his answer was interesting. He said, our guys take it up a notch when faced with adversity. That all of a sudden sets them into a higher gear. So down 3-0, you have that scuffle that clearly mm -hmm. raised the tempers. They score shortly thereafter. You never know. It's still a long road back, but... He claims they play better when they get punched in the mouth. They got elbowed in the mouth, so to speak, by Nane, and here they are. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, sometimes coaches will say to you when you're losing, go out there and cause trouble because it gets everyone fired up and hopefully gets you more fired up than the opposition. It's certainly a tactic. Not that it was in this case. I think they had a very genuine reason to ask the ref whether that was a red card offense or not from Nane. Like I say, if there was VAR, Nane could have been in a lot more serious trouble. It, ch it changes the half-time talk from the managers, especially from Santiago Lopez now. At 3-0, oh, tough to come. At 3-1, he said, well, come on, guys, get one more. We're back in this match. Now look at it like this. 3-1 sounds different. It's different numbers, but you always say the most dangerous lead in soccer is 2-0. It's the same margin. It's a two-goal margin. It's just not 2-0. 3-1 just sounds worse, I guess, in some cases, but it, it's still two goals, and that is the most dangerous lead. Now they could make it three again right here, Oakland, on the free kick. Ryan Her, Trayvon Reed assessing the options. It's Reed whipping it in and sent packing. All the way out to midfield. That might be it here in this first half. And it is. There's the whistle. Oakland three unanswered to start things, and it seemed like they would cruise into halftime with a three-goal lead. But then the penalty for El Farolito in the 45th minute. It's a two-goal game again. It does, and well done to El Farolito for hanging in there. They could easily have just dropped their heads at 3-0, but they didn't. And they were fighting for the cause, and they were fighting for their teammates. A bit of shoving and pushing going on. It shows they have the passion. They get a little bit of luck. Taylor Bailey makes an error and uh, gives them a penalty, and they're back in this match. And... That's going to be the halftime chat. Again, just looking at their body language, can they go 90 minutes with a professional team who's a lot fitter? That's going to be the big question in the second half. The Bay Area battle here in Open Cup between El Farolito of NPSL and the Oakland Roots of USL Championship was going all Oakland's way early. El Farolito pulls one back late, but they still have a long road to come back in this one. Oakland hoping for the club's first ever Open Cup win. 45 minutes away from doing so with a two-goal lead. We'll be back with more in just a bit.
Moments away from beginning half number two between the Oakland Roots and El Fanalito. With that, we take a look around U.S. Open Cup tonight with some scores from elsewhere. Ten matches in all on the day here in Open Cup. Only two are still in action. It's ours right here. Three to one Oakland over El Fanalito. And then San Antonio two to one over Club de Leon. That one actually went into extra time. There's still seven minutes in extra time there, top right of your screen. Everything else is final. So San Antonio and Oakland, the two shows left in town. And still to this point, no lower division side has won today. The cup sets, as we call them, that we'd like to see in this tournament. I guess we'll have to wait until at least tomorrow to see any of those. Barring a comeback here from El Fanolito or some late drama between San Antonio and Club de Leon of Nisa. And a full slate again on tap for tomorrow here in U.S. Open Cup. We've got another slate of nine matches and we'll have more beyond that as well into Thursday and then one next Tuesday. And it's still very tough to tell early here, Gary, but any of these stick out to you as ones you'll be tuning into? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of good ones. You can have a look at South Georgia Tormenta at home to Rio Grande Valley. That's always a tricky one for the USL side because Tormenta have had some great runs in the past. Uh, Chattanooga Red Walls hosting Birmingham Legion who are top of the East at the moment. So. Yeah, there's some, there's some exciting games, and there's also um, uh, Colorado Springs up against Northern Colorado Hailstorm, and you can see it on the left-hand side, and that's a match that Hailstorm won last year mm -hmm. and went on to beat uh, Salt, uh, Real Salt Lake City in the next round, so watch out for the Hailstorm. Switchbacks, be careful. 18 total games tomorrow, and then one Thursday and one next Tuesday, so a very late finish and scheduling conflicts there. Another one there on the right side, Phoenix Rising hosting Greenville Triumph. That Greenville team beat Oakland last year when Juan Guerra was the head coach of Oakland. Now Juan Guerra, the coach of Phoenix Rising. So he has to deal with the Greenville Triumph again. That taking place tomorrow. So if you want your U.S. Open Cup fix, you can get it all on the Bleacher Report football channel and also the YouTube and U.S. Soccer as well. If you take a look at the way things have played out here, First half highlights, it was Oakland jumping on El Fanolito early, but it was almost the opposite. Taylor Bailey made this terrific free kick stop. Yeah, it was a good save and a difficult one for him because he was about to clash with the post at the end and he had to some evasive movement. And then Johnny Rodriguez, he's, play, he's played so well, especially in the early parts of this game. Went ahead and drew that free kick. They took it twice. The first time it was blown dead because the referee hadn't yet blown the whistle to restart play. And then when it actually counted, Rodriguez found the goal, and then from that point on, it was just a Wolfgang Prentice show. Yeah, this is Ethan Kula who cuts it out and gives it to Prentice, cuts inside on his left, and buries that one in the back of the net, and it was just all too easy. There's space to play in here. Look at this, just turn, nobody pressurizing uh, Trayvon Reed here, and he's able to get through, gets Johnny Rodriguez in again. He gets head up, finds Prentice at the far post. Good finish from Wolfgang Prentice, and great play early on from Oakland Roots. Starting in that right wing back spot for Eduardo Rito, the top player by all accounts on this Oakland team. All league player in USL last year, and he's filling in nicely. And the field became a bit of an issue for Taylor Bailey. It hopped up there on that last touch, cleaned up his own mess, made the big stop here from point blank range. He'd get himself into some more trouble a bit later, however. Yeah, this is the one. He tries this little pass out wide and it gets intercepted. Now, that's one error. Then instead of standing up here, he dives in, goes for the ball, can't get the ball, but gets the player. And Arahu says, thank you very much. I won the penalty and I will bury the penalty. And suddenly they're sort of back in the game. It's just opened the door in that sense. And uh, interesting enough, the XG for the visitors is bigger than Oakland Roots. And we spoke about how Oakland Roots are normally good with XG. Well, the visitors have had enough chances to be on level terms according to expected goals. And underway now in half number two, Oakland from left to right in the all black. El Fanolito from right to left in the yellow and blue. Alongside Manchester United legend Gary Bailey, I'm Joe Malfa. Happy to have you with us tonight from Pioneer Stadium in Hayward, California. Back to that expected goals conversation. It is a little bit tilted, I suppose. Uh, penalties, depending on the metric you're using, the outlet that's supplying the expected goals, usually an automatic .75, I believe it is, for a penalty. So that certainly helps out. But even before that, El Fanolito was starting to get their chances. Yep, they certainly were. And I'm sure they're going to come out here or are coming out here 
with a, a renewed sense. They're fired up. There's been a little bit of aggro first half. They're all pumped. They've got the goal. The coach has said, look, I've got some players on the bench and some important players for El Farolito as well. They've got their, their normal number nine as they get a chance to break away here. Yeah? Bad giveaway by Oakland. here against El Panolito and this one will elicit a yellow card. Shown to Arias. Looks like Prentice will be okay as he gets up. So just saying they've got a couple of good players on the bench. Benson Demba is their normal main striker. There's a bit of a hand to the face there. And um, and Daniel Butraga Boro who might even be on. We've just been told that he might actually be on the pitch already. So they I think that the sort of logic, if you're the coach of El Farolito, you say to these guys who are part-timers, guys, give me everything you got. And when you're gassed, we'll bring you off. We'll bring somebody else on. Tamakas just went down very awkwardly. He tripped over the ball. He's still down back behind the play, holding his knee. Oakland trying to shout to kick the ball out of play and stop the play. That's a big concern for Oakland here. Tamakas, your big marquee man that you brought in this offseason, the Salvadoran International. Just an awkward tumble as he tried to plant after stopping the ball. He's still down. Flexing that right leg of his. Have a look. This is ankle, I think, just went over on his ankle as he tried that little trick. He's rubbing down his right knee. Looks like he turned the ankle and might have just twisted the knee. The way he landed awkwardly, seems like he's going to grimace through this. Give a little thumbs up to the trainer. Eduardo Rito over showing concern as well. There's Noah Delgado in the foreground walking towards you, the head coach. It's going to be concerning, and maybe in a game like this, with a two-goal lead, I wonder how much you want to push him. But he is looking like he wants a soldier on, walking back to midfield. That's always a good sign, a little nod and a thumbs up. Non-contact injury is just always so scary mm. when they first happen, you never know what it could be. He's right back out there on that back line for Oakland. Keep an eye on that, however, over the next few minutes. Gurik trying to burst through the middle, he's shouldered off. Along by Kohler, Ryan Hur turns into space, has Prentice. Wolfgang Prentice with two goals already, has Johnny Rodriguez centrally, it looked like it might have been a handball there. Popped up and certainly hit the arm, but is there any intent? No, it did hit the arm, you're right, but I think it'd be tough to call that a handball, not much you can do, it just popped up very, very close to his body and these days, you never know with handballs. <laughs> the rules have changed, and you know, if, if referee feels your arm is outside of its natural shape or shadow, the, the words they use, then they can give it. But they get away with that one, El Farolito. One back by Oakland. Here's right for Ethan Kohler. Taken away, out to Prentice. Prentice, barely able to keep it in, has options in the box. Wolfgang Prentice toward Rodriguez. Falling, settled by Reed, he's taken down, no call. It, just, it, it does hit his hand, but it, it's, it's not even aware of where it is. And that, he was going down anyway, Trayvon Reed. So, referee, spot on there on both those, I think. Chris Calderon. Daniel Gomez, wearing number 15, has checked in for Oakland. For Joseph Nane, one of the young academy products through Project 510 there. 
USL2 affiliate. It might also be because Nona is on a yellow and I think El Farolito players are probably looking for him to try and get even. They think that he might have purposefully elbowed one of their players, so probably a wise thing for the coach to get him off. Advantage played here for Oakland. It's out to Reed. Trayvon Reed back for Gomez through to Rodriguez. No look, touch pass to Ryan Hur, who's taken down, cleanly won by El Farolito. Getting right back here. Rodriguez could not evade Mosquera. Big center back for El Farolito. Now fouled by Danny Gomez. El Farolito looking to get out in transition. Monroy calling for it down on the left side. And the offside flag comes up on the right side of the field. Oakland maybe a bit sluggish out of the dressing room. El Farolito looking to capitalize early. Yeah, there was a better option. As you were just pointing out on the left-hand side, he goes to the right-hand side, but then it's not necessarily the, the player playing the ball. It's the player receiving that has got to keep himself on side, which he wasn't able to do there. Look out here, Bailey playing with his feet. That has not been a recipe for success so far tonight. <laughs> he gets out of this one. Now it's right for Rodriguez. Over the top for Prentice. Wolfgang Prentice sitting on a hat trick, chips it up to himself, still trying to push his way through. Again for Prentice, the ball sits up nicely for a shot. What are you, 15 yards out and tries to bring it down and get into a better position, but by then he's closed down. Sometimes your, your first chance is, is your best chance. Buitrago did check in for Araujo at halftime for El Farolito. Sure, there'll be many more substitutions, especially for El Ferradito. We're about to make another one here. Demor Benson, who you mentioned, is considered their top striker. Getting ready to check in. Knocked down for Higuera, and a free kick coming for El Ferradito. They're still hanging around here. Mm. They are. It's going to be a very concerned Noah Delgado on the bench there for Oakland Roots. Be watching this thinking, we just can't let these players, we have to be more professional. We have to find a way of breaking them down. There's enough space in midfield to operate in for Oakland Roots to really dominate the passing game. And we haven't seen, talking of substitutions, we haven't seen a John Quinones, Saya. He scored one and made one in extra time in the previous game against International San Francisco. He's still got to come onto the pitch. And he really is an important player for them. Arias Monroy standing over it. It is Arias put it wide. Try to go under and around the wall. Ten minutes into the second half, El Farolito continues to find some areas around that Oakland back line. Bailey almost gave it away again out of the back. Fortunate for Oakland, it took a touch off of Monroy, and it'll be a roots throw. At some point, Gary, it's just got to be kick the ball as far as you can and forget about it. Unless you're under strict orders from the coach to play out from the back, and if the coach wants it that way and he feels it's important, and Paul Blanchett's quite good at that, he might be insisting that, that, that Bailey just keeps on doing it. But I, I think from a sensible point of view as a keeper, if it's not working, then you cut your losses and you go longer. Well, Taylor Bailey might be under strict orders. Gary Bailey would kick that ball 60 yards. Oh, I'd <laughs> kick it 90 yards. <laughs> <laughs> And the offside flag comes up here on El Farolito. Back in the day, you would never play it short, and you would have a huge big number nine, which was your target man. And 
And you'd score goals from it sometimes. You'd knock at the length of the pitch, he flicks it on, and somebody runs through him, you score. So it's not like it's not a decent ball. Knocking it long is not the worst thing in the world. It's just modern-day coaches prefer you to build up from the back. But you don't have to do it every single time, I don't think. Alfonso seems to be getting to every 50-50 ball here at midfield. Urik on the turn, gets past Kevin Wright. You wonder if it's Noah Delgado's turn to bring on maybe a starter or two from this past Saturday to settle things down, swing it back in their favor. Well, if, if you want to break El Farolito Hearts, bring on Rito. <laughs> it's, the, <laughs> it's the player they fear the most because there's a number of players who played alongside him and they just say he's just a beast of a player. Great ball over the top, the header is wide. Terrific service from Becerra. That's a good ball in and unmarked in the center of the box. Going up for I think that they're probably aiming for the number nine, Benson Denver, who had come on, but it goes over his head. Just stretching a little bit there, but danger again. And there's a yellow jersey behind. So they're throwing numbers forward still, El Farolito. And their first to it again off the goal kick. Shooting Oakland nine to six. It's not for a lack of chances. They've been there for El Farolito. Some have not been good clean looks, but a number of opportunities. The free kick that was stopped by Taylor Bailey, and also that big point blank save he made on the ball he gave away. Those two stick out in addition to, of course, the penalty that they scored. Now another offside flag against El Fanalito. You figure at some point they might get this timing proper as well. Mm. And he's looking shot, the new man who came on there, Benson Demba, a 27-year-old from Honduras. He's got pace there. He is putting pressure on. That's better, Taylor <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> and he got it to his number nine. Rodriguez holds up the play and draws a foul. There we go. <laughs> I think for Noah Delgado, he can, he can bring on players off the bench. I mean, he's got the likes of... Derek Formello is more than, more than good, and we mentioned Rita. He probably wants to just see if these current players can do the business for him, if they can, if they can tough it out, if they've got the right mentality. He'll learn a lot from, from this about these players that are on the pitch. For now, you still have that safety net of the two-goal lead, but all of a sudden, El Farolito makes this 3-2, to two, and things change drastically. Flicked on to Rodriguez by Ryan Hur. Johnny Rodriguez touches it wide, and we'd like to have that one back. Not his finest moment. I think he'd, uh, he'll focus on the first half and scoring and a wonderful assist, but that was a total mishit. One last sub to get you that they snuck on at halftime. El Farolito Uric came out, and John Quinones came on, so they've used three of their changes. an important player to have on the pitch. John Saya Quinones. Still young, it's, uh, only 22 years of age. And play first division in Colombia. So again, as we were saying earlier, these players are quality players for El Farolito. They might not be as fit and have played as much football as Oakland Roots, but they've got good grounding in the past at a very decent level. Okay, Prentice taken down. And again, not many players on this El Parolito team are younger, 22, 23, but for the ones who are, a great opportunity here. We already saw it once this year in USL Championship. A defender for RGVFC who played last year for Miami United in US Open Cup. Impressed some people on film in that game against Miami FC of USL Championship. Went to an open tryout in the offseason with RGVFC. Earned himself a trial from the trial here in the starting left back job at 20 years of age. And he was just on one of these NPSL teams like El Panolito. And again, we touched on it. It's mostly an older team, but for a younger player like Quinones at 22. This is a showcase for him here for the next 30 minutes. Wolfgang Prentice looking for his hat trick. 
I don't find it there. The idea was good, cut in on that left foot and try and bend it into the far post, but strike wasn't what he wanted. He was threatening to go down the right, cuts in, no, it just gets under that, doesn't, it doesn't have the right height, doesn't bend in either, but the idea was good. Now we're gone, half hour to play here from Pioneer Stadium on the campus of Cal State University East Bay with Gary Bailey, I'm Joe Malfa. Somebody lost a shin guard down there. Ball makes its way out to midfield. Benson. Long for Monroy. Tamakas looks to be okay after he took that knock. In the early stages of this half, over there defending well. Here's Monroy again. Prentice defending. Monroy back for Perez. Good switch from one side to the other there. Playing some lovely football, El Farolito. A free kick on the way. Some space for Buitrago. Buitrago is shot deflected. It's a mystery when that ball starts spinning on this turf. Fortunately for Taylor Bailey, it bounced right into his hands. Not the same for Paul Blanchett over the weekend yes. on Saturday. <laughs> a similar play like that. And the ball just took a hard right turn. Seemed to be going wide for a goal kick. All of a sudden it hit the post and Blanchett was scrambling back to keep it from crossing the line. Taylor Bailey has to deal with no such adventure. At least not yet. Murray will stand over this quick free kick here in their own half. And he gets it along for Ethan Kohler. Two players that Oakland Roots signed from San Jose Earthquakes Academy. They played with San Jose's MLS and X Pro team last year. But you're seeing more and more of that around USL Championship and ties back to the conversation we had in the first half, Gary, as this being a now viable option with many, many young talents coming through, like a Kobe Henry, like a Joshua Winder, Ronaldo Damas you brought up, who see a path to more minutes right away in USL Championship than in MLS. And because of all the sort of intricate rules for MLS as far as getting dealt abroad, it's easier pathway through USL. So Oakland reaps the benefits, and now it's Drew Murray in the heart of this second scuffle of the match now. Fadalito took exception to something down there. And there was a, a question mark about a, a hand in the face of one of the El Farolito players. And again, difficult difficult for the officials. If you don't see it clearly, you're not quite sure what happened. The yellow card given up, but they wanted more El Farolito. Let's have a look as we can see. A lot of grabbing and pushing going on. See there, the arm came up again. Now, was it just holding the player off or? So hard for the officials, hard for us to see with replays. Neil Hackshaw picks up the yellow here. He's saying he did nothing. The player ran into his arm. That certainly is making things a little bit spicy. <laughs> and another goal for El Farolito. Then we could really see things take off here because Right now, they're still fairly comfortable Oakland Roots, but just a one goal difference. And then all the tricks of the trade will come out from both sides as they start getting desperate. And they see the clock ticking down. Rodriguez. And now a free kick coming for Oakland. Yellow card as well. Is it a second yellow? Is a red card come out in the Oh, yes, it was for Arias. So El Farolito will go 
down a man now. Oh, no, no, he changed it. He changed it. He got the wrong player initially. I initially thought it was Mosqueda, which is why when you said he's got a red card in his head, it shocked me. <laughs> but he came over, realized he got the wrong guy, and gave the yellow card to Mosqueda. And, of course, right there for Mosqueda. It's a straight yellow card. I mean, there's no question. He just steps into Rodriguez and hits him. Yeah, it's getting a little bit more chippy. Hart certainly in the throat for a moment there for Arias, wondering what he did wrong to get sent off, but not to be the case. And here it goes even further. I don't know if any Roots players will be going into a local El Fadolito restaurant at all this week. <laughs> they might be turned away at the door. We have to be careful, Oakland Roots, not to get too involved with things off the ball here. You know, they're 3-1 up. It's in El Farolito's interest to spice things up and get players annoyed. It's not in Oakland Roots' interest. So to calm things down, get on with the match. Again, we come back to that word being professional. From the free kick, clipped ahead. Tabacas waiting for it. Lisa punches away. Now the only show in town here in US Open Cup tonight. All other matches final. Right over the top, and Lisa there again. The other one we were waiting on was San Antonio at home against Club de Leon of Nisa. San Antonio held on to win 2-1 to one through 120 minutes. They were forced the distance. Another 18 matches slated for tomorrow and one for Thursday. With the round three draw taking place at 6.30 Eastern time on Thursday. That'll lead right into... 7 p.m. match on Thursday night. Which is Richmond Kickers up against is it Cleveland. Not sure if they got through in their round. On Thursday is against Cleveland, correct, yes. Richmond and Cleveland on Thursday. Oakland getting ready to make a pair of changes here. Anwar Pelaez, one of their off-season acquisitions, usually flip-flops with Johnny Rodriguez, and that will be the substitution here. Rodriguez off, Pelaya is on. And it will be Trayvon Reed off for Dark Formella. Two players who started over the weekend for the Roots. Formella had the assist on the Rodriguez goal to win it 1-0. And what a good assist that was, by the way. Fantastic ball pulled back for Rodriguez. So aside from getting off Jojo Nane at halftime, partly due to his yellow card, you'd have to imagine... So knowing Delgado wait as long as he could to make any more changes here in the 69th minute. Brings on Pelias and Formella. That's extra problems for El Farolito. Pelias and Formella, such good players, and they're fresh as well. And no doubt the coach has just said to them, hey guys, I need you to come on here and cause problems and, and keep El Farolito on the back foot. Farolito wants to get right back on the front foot here. Pulled back by Wright. And that might be a yellow for Kevin Wright. Tactical foul at midfield, it will be. So that whole left side now, Neville Hackshaw, Kevin Wright, both on yellows. On well, the Oakland Roots. A little tug on the arm. And that's enough to put you off balance and to slow you down. Referee's getting busy, <laughs> Chris Calderon. The book is getting awfully full. How about this volley here? Bailey makes a save. Spills it out for a corner. Really struck well. They go quickly from the corner. For the area for Arias. Arias shoots it wide. Bailey had it covered. Dole for good measure. Very impressed with El Farolito that they're still pushing forward, they're still being positive. That ball might just have been going wide. Difficult to see this one did go wide. What an ambitious long way out shot. But that's that's the lovely thing about this team is from the from the kickoff they have gone forward and attacked, played football the way they want to play it, and yeah, the scoreline doesn't quite isn't quite what they wanted. My, they've given us, uh, and they've given Oakland Roots a few problems here tonight. The time that they made it 3-0 as Bailey just sends this one out to midfield. 
And they made it 3-0. You and I started having the conversation. Gerald Fanolito, you've got 60 minutes to try and salvage something and leave with your head held up high. You risk going down. More goals. Look out here. Another yellow coming out of the pocket. You risk going down more, but that hasn't been the case. They have persevered, and regardless of the outcome now, it's going to springboard them. You imagine into their NPSL season. Feather in their cap and how they've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the roots here. That's a yellow card for Becerra. He tries to get out of the way, to be fair to him. But nonetheless, he brings the player down with body contact. Benson. Another heavy challenge by Tamakas into the back of John Quinones. Up to uh, six yellow cards in this match. It has gotten awfully physical. I think they should have the day off tomorrow. El <laughs> Farolito, they're going to need it to recover from all the bumps and bruises and the tired legs. Again, the few professions that head coach Santiago Lopez pointed out. Uber Eats, painter, contractor. I think you're going to need somebody else to deliver your food tomorrow, <laughs> paint your house, or build your backyard porch. All in the replacements. They have put in quite the shift tonight. Chance to get this in from out wide on the set piece. And toward the top of the six, headed vertically by Hackshaw. And a corner on the way. I have to imagine that would be a great feeling. And that's part of what makes the Open Cup so magical. Imagine going into work tomorrow and saying, yeah, what did you do last night? I won a U.S. Open Cup game. <laughs> Corner curled in, glancing header. It was going wide, but a flick further away by Formella. And now we'll do the corner from the opposite side. We've got the first touch there, El Farolito. And when that happens, it can very easily result in a goal. Near post. He's dropping right in front of Bailey before Hackshaw got ahead to it. The majority of this second half has been played at this end of the field. Cutting in, Quinones tried to give and go. Quinones has provided a spark for El Paralito down this left side since coming on. He's a good player, Saya Quinones. Had a huge impact, as I mentioned, with a goal and an assist in extra time in the last match. As we come up towards the 75th minute, it's the last 15 minutes that you think a, a semi-professional team is going to struggle. They won't have the fitness levels, but it's not looking that way. They look like they've got plenty of energy, El Farolito. Another one that Tavakas has to head away, put right back in. That's the ambition of being in a game like this. You want to be the hero if you are Jonathan Perez, but might have been better suited taking one touch or two or three on that one instead of trying the worldly volley. And if you were thinking of the players who are the fittest, it's actually Oakland Roots players who are getting the cramp first. Actually saying get away because what happens is that they try and pick the player up off the ground and then the, you know, the teammates of the player on the ground, they get annoyed and so the referee quite cleverly is just pulling the El Faradita players away. The Roots fans always have a good time. They've had tremendous support for this club ever since they started in Nisa. And they have been treated to quite the physical affair tonight. They started in that first half with Nane and sort of spiraled from there. He did raise his elbow though, Nabil Hakshaw. He's got to be so careful. <laughs> Like I said, there's going to be a few bruises tomorrow morning. Look at the chest of Johnny Rodriguez. On short notice this past Saturday, as Oakland had to temporarily move their home venue, with Murray seemingly asking for a sub there, the referee just made the signal. But they, on short notice, had 4,700 fans here at Pioneer Stadium. Their record at their normal home, Laney College, is around 5,500. So they were only 800 fans shy of a club record 
And that was on four days notice, moving wow. to a temporary location. They have tremendous support. And if they do well this season, open routes, which certainly with a the squad they have is possible, then they'll get more and more fans. They do have some quality players. Rita probably been the best of the lot, but that's a deep, deep squad that the Roots have. And Aaron talks of putting up a temporary stadium in the next year or two, somewhere in the Oakland area where they have the space. That would be a more permanent home until they can build what they are hoping is a state-of-the-art facility down the line. Owners have made a tremendous investment in this team, They're looking in the interim for a more suitable location that can sustain the fans they've had. They have, in a way, outgrown their home at Laney College. The most they can hold is around 5,500. Outside of that, it's standing room only, and they're looking for a bigger venue temporarily. Drew Murray came off. Danny Barbier came on. Barbier has been a consistent fixture on that back line. Or the last year and a half now for Oakland, 25-year-old from Atlanta, Georgia. He was a very highly touted prospect coming up the pipeline for the U.S. youth national team. Played with the likes of Christian Pulisic as a key starter at the Under-17 World Cup in 2015. Had three years in the West Brom youth setup over in England before he moved on from there. They signed him last season from Sporting Kansas City. That is where Oakland has a bevy of depth. That center back, Hackshaw and Tamakas get the starts there tonight, which meant that Barbier, Emra Clementa went to the bench. Also Tarek Moran on that bench. Very deep along that back line. And Noah Delgado very happy with how they've looked defensively so far to start their season. And more physical play here as her is taken down. That's a late tackle. That really for me is a yellow card. You got nowhere near the ball there. Saya Quinones. Still imagine Oakland would like another goal here to put this out of reach. Alfonso has had some chances this second half. So long as there is time on that clock, if you make it a one goal game, then you know you're going to get a wave of attacking urgency coming your way. So if you're Oakland, there's no sense in Trying to beat around the bush here. If you can get a fourth, go ahead and get that fourth. They might be in danger of conceding one here. Hackshaw gets on the end of it. It'd be nice to get a fourth, but they've still got a two goal gap. And if they're professional about it, if they're sensible about it, Oakland Roots, there's no reason why they just can't see it through to the end at 3 1. And a fourth would be nice, of course, but what they can't afford to do is concede. So it's about controlling the ball, moving it around, keeping possession. In all those things that we always talk about you should do if you're leading in the last 10 minutes. Played out wide. Dark Formella dips the shoulder at the end line. That's almost how he created the goal on Saturday, except he was able to cut it back. This time he runs out of real estate. I'm guessing there's more substitutes coming on, or maybe not. Okay, the referee was just holding things up for a second then. Tried to get that change on for Oakland, but I think they got it quickly enough. And here comes Quinones. John Quinones cutting in. He's been very impressive for El Fanolito. Turns and gives it up to Perez. Perez. Cleared by Hackshaw. are turning on the ref here a little bit. They're getting annoyed, but again, you have to be careful what they say to the ref. And it was a bit of yellow card, which is what I think they have got. I believe that was issued to Elmira Panza, checked in for El Farolito, and picked up the yellow. Brian Herr, still with it in his first professional season out of the University of the Pacific. Right the overlapping run. Back 
Blackshaw steps up. Kohler settles it. Now Tamakas. Prentice couldn't do anything with it. Noah Delgano very animated here. And he tries to will this team over the finish line professionally, as you put it, Gary. It's been a strange match for him as coach, I'm sure. And 3 0, it, it just was one way traffic for Oakland Roots. It looked literally it was going to be like a training game. But give El Farolito credit. They fought their way back in. They've battled, they've almost got, got fitter as the game has gone on. And they've covered so much ground, they've attacked, they've pushed players forward. And yes, they might go out, and it's looking that way at the moment. And they can go out with their head held very, very high indeed. All the way back for Bailey. I don't know that we've seen him try to play short since about the 55 minute mark. <laughs> and there's probably reason for that. And half the ones he's knocked long, they've actually picked up the pieces, Oakland Roots, and been on the attack. So it hasn't been a, a bad ball to play. Skera, out for Perez. Left it short of Quinones. Now it's Prentice. Good switch out to Quinones. Quinones commits the foul from behind. That ball sent goalward after the whistle. Kicking the ball away, which gets a yellow card. And that was just silly. It was Yehimi Arias. He's going to get sent off for that. And they're trying to stop him, get sent, the referee sending him off the players now. but. It's, not, it's normally for wasting time, and obviously they're not wasting time because they don't want to, but you still can't kick the ball away. More frustration than anything else mm. there, but usually you see that to your point for delaying the restart. That might be a yellow card for what the referee feels is descent, showing him up for a foul call he wasn't happy with. Oakland Roots fans serenade him as he makes his way off the field. was the yellow card he initially picked mm. up earlier in the match. And yeah, that was an arm up in the face. That, that could easily be red. And you see well after the whistle here, just sends it into the Oakland Knight. And you see, you know that's a yellow card offense. And it's a frustration. It's the, you know, they're 3-1 down. They're desperate to get one goal back. And the clock is ticking down. And the frustrations are going to run high, are running high for El Farolito. They've done so well to keep themselves in this game. Now to ten minutes, same as the last match, and the last match was also ten minutes from time. <laughs> but Soto, their captain, got sent off. So you're saying they're better with ten men? <laughs> well, it worked, it worked for them in the last game. They went from nil-nil to win three nils. So I'm not saying they can <laughs> score three goals now, but <laughs> it's not the ideal blueprint. But hey, if it works, they've got a few minutes to try and sort that out. I don't know if it'll work tonight. Now, from Mosquera, picked up by Buitrago. Looking long for Quinones, brings it down. Quinones off the bar. Loose in front, Hackshaw gets it away. Maybe 10 men is the recipe. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a brilliant finish and a great clearance off the line. And a little bit of contact with the players there, but unbelievable the way that was brought down by Saya Quinones. Have a look at this again. Beautiful long ball for a start. And the first touch, and he goes up and gets it over the goalkeeper. It's the crossbar, and who's quickest? It takes a while to react, Neville Hackshaw. I mean, as, as it bounced, I'm thinking you're going to hook it. Have a look here. Gets it over Taylor Bailey. Keeper gets a slight touch, and then Hackshaw waits for it to bounce, and then has to do some acrobatics to clear that ball. 
And that, if that had gone in, that would have really put the cat amongst the pigeons. So all it takes is one here. There's going to be enough time if you find that goal within these next couple of minutes to put those waves of pressure on the roots in a one goal game. Black stays down, crossed in from the end line. The longer and longer you let a team like this hang around, the more they're going to believe in themselves that they can get one back. That'll help Oakland take some time off this clock here. We'll make a change as well. Out of the match, Ryan Hur into the match, Memo Diaz. It's giving a bit of extra experience in the pitch for the, uh, the last few minutes. Talisa, who's been awfully quiet in this second half. Oakland have not had that many opportunities. They win it right up the pitch here. Oakland does not have a single shot on target in this second half. Their expected goals, 0 .08, only two shots, neither on target. Offense has gone completely cold here in this second half for Oakland. And again, they got the hard work out of the way early. 25 minutes in, got three of them. It. It's going to be a difficult one for Noah Delgado to break down after this because you're 100% right. In the, in, the, in the one instance, it's a fantastic first opening 20 minutes. Top, top class. Plenty of praise for all these players for the finishing that was on view. But then from then, it's been an average performance. So it's a real mixed game. Great first 20 minutes. Not much to talk about after that. And that's where it's sort of a catch-22. Do you look at it and say... Well, we only weren't good because we put it in cruise control and took it a little bit lightly, or did we actually, you know, maybe struggle? Here's Prentice, who has two of those early goals. Prentice out to Formella. You've been sitting here watching it the whole way. What do you think? Is it a case of they, after scoring early, struggled as Memo Diaz plays it in? Did they struggle, or did they just sort of ease off the throttle and... Just get into cruise control, and that made it look worse than it was for them in a way. To me, I felt they've struggled. The quality of play hasn't been there. The passing hasn't been there. The shots haven't been there. You know, if if, if it was all shots and, and they, they, they hadn't got the extra goal, you'd say, well, they could have got a fourth or a fifth. But as you quite rightly point out, Lisa and the El Farolito goal has nothing to do second half. And uh, they really have lost their way totally there, Oakland, which is, which is something that's going to worry Noah Delgado. But having said that, he's still got to then pat them on the back. If they win 3-1 and they score three goals in the first 20 minutes, you've got to see that as the positive. So it's, <laughs> like I said, it's a mixed bag for the coach. Ultimately, though, a win's a win. Diaz, at least is there. Lisa sends it long. Hackshaw gives it away. Puts it right back into the path of Benson. Benson still battling. Players look really tired now, El Farolito. You can just see, I think they've given everything they've got. There's nothing much left in the tank. They've made the substitutions that they wanted to make. And they just haven't been able to get that second goal. That second goal would have made this a totally different game. But it hasn't come for them. They've hit the crossbar. What was it, five minutes ago? That was probably their chance. And when that didn't go in, and Neville Hackshaw managed to clear it off the line, then I think that pretty much sealed their fate. Over the top here, Tavakas gets ahead to it. Diaz has to evade some of the pressure, falls to Quinones. Five minutes added on to the end here. And if you don't have your fill after tonight, there's more U.S. Open Cup action ahead tomorrow night. Five matches will be streamed live on the BR app and BR Football's YouTube channel. The Kentucky Derby kicks off Wednesday's coverage at 7 Eastern as Lexington travels to Louisville. And tonight, 
and doesn't conclude until Greenville Triumph kicks off at Phoenix Rising at 10.30 Eastern. Visit usopencup.com for the full schedule and links to watch live. I'm going to have to come up with a new name for that Louisville-Lexington bit. Kentucky Derby's already taken by an awfully famous horse race that'll take place that first weekend of May. Talking of names, I forgot to mention what El Farolito means. It means Little Lighthouse. Hence the TFO in the back yeah. there. Well, the one that was swinging before now is a different <laughs> one, but there was a lighthouse back there, yeah. I can assure you. <laughs> They've done themselves proud. I've said it a few times, I'll say it again. Well done. Positive play. A bit of wasting time going on there, which gets a yellow card. But to come up against Oakland Roos to be 3 0 down in 20 minutes and put on this performance is, is, I think, top, top class. And coach Santiago Lopez can be very proud of his team. Open for at least a little bit here, just temporarily bringing some professional soccer back to Pioneer Stadium on the campus of Cal State East Bay. Last professional match on this field before Oakland had the win on Saturday against New Mexico was a WPS final a couple of decades ago now in women's soccer. FC Golden Pride with some illustrious names on that roster. And it ties into some news today because the NWSL awarded the Bay Area the league's 14th team in some expansion. Yeah, just looking at that team was yeah, called the Golden Pride there. Christy Sinclair Marta who's still playing. Wolfgang Prince is looking for his hat trick. Lisa makes the save out for a corner. Good save the goalkeeper. The Amart is still um, playing for Orlando Pride and still doing well. Orlando Pride, the sister club of last year's Open Cup winner, Orlando City. That would have been a nice hat trick for Wolfgang Prentice if that had gone in. Halfway through stoppage time here. Formella from the corner, headed by Hackshaw just wide. This could have gotten very interesting had that ball gone in instead of hitting the crossbar a few moments ago from John Quinones. Yeah. But now at this point, Oakland is starting to taste this victory. Be hard pressed to give up two in two minutes here. That's unless El Farolito can somehow find an Injeco and Sergio Aguero last minute to come on and help things out. <laughs> uh, what was it? 2013 Man City versus QPR. A decade QPR. ago. Yeah. Remember it well. <laughs> I don't know if those two are on a flight to uh, Hayward, California in the next few minutes. Yeah, that, 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 that crossbar was their moment, wasn't it? And so close. Such a good bit of skill again from Saya Quinones as he did in the previous match against International San Francisco. And they would have deserved it. It wouldn't, wouldn't be a case if they were lucky. You know, they, they well deserved to come back at 3-2. They deserve to be in this game the whole way. They expected goals, and again, we mentioned it earlier that the penalty aids it a little bit, but El Farolito 1.66, Oakland 1.19. 14 shots to 12 in El Farolito's favor. Five shots on target to four in Oakland's favor. And that's where they had their efficiency and made it count the most. And yet for Oakland Roots and expect to goals in all three matches they've had, had a higher XG against New Mexico United they beat, against RGV Toros they drew. And even the match they lost 3-1 at San Antonio, their XG was still higher than San Antonio. So again, yes, I know it's 11 changes, but they're still a very good team they've put out and the El Farolito players who are going to be back on construction sites tomorrow <laughs> and in their cars driving Uber Eats have just put on a fantastic display and really deserve to be a little bit closer judging by the second half performance. And just to reiterate, if anybody tuned in in the last 10 minutes and took Gary's comment out of context, that is literally what the coach told us. Those are yes. their literal yes. jobs that they're going back to tomorrow. Painter was one of the other ones in there. One last yellow card in this one, and a match that got very physical in the second half. Five minutes have come and gone. No one Delgado has talked about making history this year with Oakland, not necessarily on the large scale of trophies. Sure, they'd like those to come, but the little moments as the year goes along. Chance here in the middle for Formella. And here's a little bit of history for the Oakland Roots tonight as that final whistle blows their first ever win in U.S. Open Cup.
Yeah, good win, all set up in the first 20 minutes with a, a blistering start to the game, but congrats to El Farolita for putting up a great fight, for not giving up at 3-0 down, for coming in back and making this a real match. And I can see Noah Delgado just shaking Santiago Lopez's hand and nodding his head as if to say, wow, you really, really gave us a one hell of a game today. It's a nice way to look at the season for Noah Delgado. He pulled the curtain back on that for us. Again, you want to make history, you want to win trophies, but more than just that, even last weekend, they've never beaten New Mexico United in two previous seasons. They wanted to make history and be the first Oakland Roots iteration that beat New Mexico United. They did that. Little victories add up throughout the year. Mm -hmm. They hope to something special at the end. And they had that moment here, their first U.S. Open Cup victory. Now they'll wait anxiously for the draw on Thursday to see who comes next. And beyond that, they, I'm sure, would love to have their first ever match against an MLS team. If that is in the cards going forward. And I think, I think there's a few players for Oakland Roots who've made a name for themselves. Wolfgang Prentice with his two goals, absolutely. Thought he was good. I thought young Ethan Kohler at 17 in midfield was at his moments. Well, not throughout, but he was still strong and big. And for Taylor Bailey, maybe not the best. Unfortunately, with his for feet, him. made a couple of big saves. He did, that's but true. With his feet, struggled. And, and got punished with the penalty against him, but got away with it. They won 3 1, and that's all that the, the books will show. And Brian Tamakas got his first start in an Oakland Roots uniform as well. Their big off season acquisition, anchoring things at the back line. Johnny Rodriguez got us started just 11 minutes in. Yeah, fantastic near post header. Rodriguez with a, with a run that lost his defender. And then this is a cutout in midfield. Well done by Ethan Kohler for winning that ball and giving it to Wolfgang Prentice, who cuts in here on his left foot and sticks it in the back of the net. And at this stage, things were just going so well for Oakland Roots. It only took eight more minutes for Prentice to find his second. And once again, it was Rodriguez, the creator. Yeah, Johnny Rodriguez puts his head up here and has a look. There you go. Looks and puts that ball right in his path for Prentice, who tucks it away very neatly, collects it on the volley. It's a beautiful pass there. Good finish, and you're beginning to think, oh dear, this could be five or six. But unfortunately, this moment is the moment that turned it around a poor pass and then compounds it by, by diving in here to win the ball when it was going away from him. And if you don't get it and you get the player, then it's a guaranteed penalty. He sent the keeper the wrong way. Araujo got the goal in the 45th minute from the spot. Well, never any more chances after that for the Oakland Roots. They had no shots on target in the second half. A very physical second half. It turned out to be, eventually, you saw Arias sent off, but El Farolito, the much better team in that second half, creating chance after chance. Just none of them found the back of the net to make things very interesting. Yeah, it's a tough race. It's a silly yellow, second yellow to get. But this is the moment. Sarah Sa Sa just gets there, and Sayara Sa just gets there, and he hits the crossbar. And Neville Hector does so well to clear that under massive pressure. If this goes in, and the keeper, to be fair, gets a little bit of a touch, maybe it puts it onto the crossbar. All round, just so close for El Farolito. And the stats are going to paint a picture of a very even game, and that's what it turned out to be, despite the start for Oakland. Yeah, the, the stats, it was even, but it's on the scoreboard, you're 3-0 up. Right. Uh, Oakland Roots can always turn around and say, yeah, I know we didn't play well, but we were 3-0 up. We just did what we had to do. We saw it through to the end. We conceded one, they hit the crossbar, so be it. But we were never in real danger. That would be the way Oakland Roots would would, would say. But I, I still think Noah Delgado would, would have wanted a much more convincing control of the game as opposed to what he got, which, as you say, was zero shots on target in the second half. Everything that they had was in the first half in terms of the opportunities. It just went quiet from there. So for El Farolito, we say goodbye to them in this edition of the U.S. Open Cup. And a lot to be proud of after winning their match in the last round and getting here to Oakland and battling until the very end. For the Oakland Roots, it's a feather in the cap. It's their first ever U.S. Open Cup victory in the club's history. That does it for us tonight from the campus of Cal State University East Bay at Pioneer Stadium. For the terrific crew that makes this possible, and my broadcast partner, Gary Bailey. I'm Joe Malfa saying good night from Hayward, California. The Oakland Roots take it 3-1, to one, their first ever U.S. Open Cup victory. Come back for 18 games overall tomorrow in the Open Cup.